uh, about uh, Kimball and how it's relevant uh, in the modern age. Uh, start some introductions. Uh, my name is Sydney Burns. I'm an analytics engineer at Webflow, and my pronouns are she, her. Uh, my name is Josh Devlin. I'm an analytics engineer at Brooklyn Data. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, and Sydney and I met working together at Brooklyn Data, and we discovered that we shared uh, a love, a passion for thinking about, talking about, and doing data modeling. Um, that said, we don't really consider ourselves experts. Uh, what we're going to share today is just things that we believe based off uh, our experience working with data. So what are we talking about today? Uh, Ralph Kimball articulated the system of data modeling called dimensional modeling in his 1996 book, The Data Warehouse Toolkit. And 1996 was 26 years ago. And the data space looks a lot different than it did then. And after all of that time has passed, we now have room to debate about whether Kimball's ideas are relevant. And today, we're going to show you that they are. But first, let's take you back in time to 1996 when Kimball wrote his book. Uh, and we'll start with us. Uh, I didn't know Sydney in 1996, but I suspect that she may have been focusing on learning to walk. Uh, I'm pretty proud in this photo. I am wearing my school prefect badge. Uh, may or may not have uh, earned that through surreptitious means. Um, the number one song, 1996, was the Macarena. Uh, number one movie was Independence Day. And computers look like this, but more often look like this. And data modeling looked like this. And so you might be asking yourself, why does data modeling still look the same in 2022? And so first, we want to kind of define what we're talking about when we say Kimball, because when we just say Kimball alone, it sounds kind of big if you've never heard it before. Um, so who is Kimball? How did he contribute to the way that we think about dimensional modeling? And what are we evaluating when we talk about Kimball's method? Uh, Ralph Kimball uh, is a researcher, uh, a software architect, uh, and a consultant. Uh, in 1996, he released this book, The Data Warehouse Toolkit. Um, and uh, in it, he like articulated a system for presenting data in data warehouses called uh, dimensional modeling. Now, uh, earlier, Jill talked about the Slack channel. I think it's Coalesce Babies Bathwater or Babies and Bathwater. Uh, if you're in the room watching online, I encourage you to join the chat. We have a first edition of the Data Warehouse Toolkit. Relic. Uh, Elizabeth, our chat champion, will be starting a thread. And if you just reply in that thread, afterwards we're going to select someone to have this book either delivered to them in person, or if you're online, we'll send it out to you. And so Kimball, what sets Kimball's methodology apart from other methodologies are two ideas that you're probably already familiar with, maybe. Um, the, and those are facts and dimensions. So a fact is going to represent a business event, usually associated with some kind of measurement. So that could be dollars in revenue. It could be number of units sold. Um, and it's usually going to be representative of a single point in time, whereas dimensions are what provide context to our facts, a lens to view our facts through. So that's going to be the who, what, where, how, and why of our facts. And dimensions can evolve over time, so things like IDs, names, dates, things like that. Uh, and if you're just starting out and these concepts aren't familiar to you, we're going to show you a little example. So here we have like an imaginary query. We've got an orders table. You'll notice it's got a prefix. It's a fact. Uh, facts represent a point in time, as Sydney just taught us. An order takes uh, place in a point in time. It's a business event, right? So here we're selecting some information about our order. Uh, and now we're going to join a second table, OK? So this is enriching our query with information about the customer. You'll see it also has a prefix, dim. It's a dimension. Uh, and that's the who of our order. And then lastly, we're going to join in uh, another dimension, products. And this is the, I guess, the what, you know, which product was ordered. And so the data structure that Josh just described is how we can identify a data model in the style of Kimball, which is also known as the star schema, which is kind of called that because so in the center you have your fact, and then everything branching off of it are our dimensions that give us a more holistic view of that fact that we can understand through the context of our business. And so now we've uncovered 
three ways of describing the same thing when we talk about Kimball. So when we say Kimball, we're also referring to dimensional modeling, which is also synonymous with star schema. So let's, now we know what Kimball is, let's take a moment to look at what's changed in the last 25, actually 26 years. Uh, so first, uh, there's been a huge technological shift. Basically, everything has gotten cheaper and more accessible. Uh, I remember uh, in the early 90s, our first family computer had a 40 megabyte hard drive. Um, these days, we don't have cheaper 40 megabyte hard drives. We have hard drives that cost about the same, but have a lot more disk space. And the same thing has happened with, uh, with compute. And um, the increase in accessibility and the decrease in cost have really led to the possibility of the emergence of the cloud data warehouse. So Kimball released the first edition of his book in 1996, and the first modern data warehouse, or cloud data warehouse, rather, uh, BigQuery was launched in 2010, Redshift followed in 2012, and Snowflake in 2015. And so the last edition of the data warehouse toolkit was published in 2013, sort of at that kind of uh, turning point with the emergence of the cloud data warehouses. Uh, here you can see the, uh, a chart of the uh, online search popularity of Redshift, BigQuery, and Snowflake combined. Uh, and if you look basically at the very left-hand side of this chart is when the most recent edition of the Data Warehouse Toolkit was written. Uh, and really, these warehouses didn't pick up steam, didn't sort of reach uh, mass adoption until the sort of last five to 10 years. And so the book uh, doesn't really deal with the concepts of, of the, the reality of warehouses today. And in Kimball's day, it made sense to transform your data before it ever landed in the warehouse. And that way, you were only storing and paying for the data that you needed. Um, and cloud data warehousing kind of brought in these major changes that uh, made life a lot easier for us in terms of easily scalable processing and performance and greater data accessibility. Um, and these have led to the adoption of ELT or extract load transform, where we load our data into the warehouse and we transform it all in one place. So next we have uh, the alternative arguments. You may be saying this is 26 years old. Uh, why should we still be using it? And people have asked those questions. Some people say uh, it takes too long to implement. Others say just join everything into uh, one big table and present that. Other people say there's, uh, there's too much detail in the book. Uh, and if you go online, you'll find people asking questions about its relevancy. We didn't have to look too hard to find these screenshots. They're, they're everywhere. And the, the confusion with those screenshots really are trying to understand which parts of Kimball we're supposed to take away, right? And so to understand what we're supposed to take away, we need to think about what Kimball's intentions were in the first place. And there were two things that were really important to Kimball when he released the Data Warehouse Toolkit. And the first was providing an understandable and usable data model to our end users. And the second was making sure that efficiency and performance were top of mind and essential. Uh, when Kimball wrote the first edition of his book, uh, Compute and storage were very uh, expensive and relatively scarce. So uh, at the end of the, uh, each chapter in the first edition, uh, there is examples in each chapter. And at the end of the chapter, it actually lists estimates in, I think, in megabytes of like how much data you would, how much room you would need to store the data of the examples in that chapter. And so, uh, Life has changed. We don't measure our data in megabytes anymore. Um, we don't really have to worry, for the most part, about how um, you know the fun fundamentally uh, the size of our data and hard limits. You know, we don't have to worry about putting another hard drive in the server. Um, that there are um, practical, practically no limits to the amount of data we can store. So. If not for performance or cost, why should we use Kimball today? And our answer to that is that this methodology is easily understood, right? So thinking back to a couple of slides ago when we're putting together this really simple basic data model and explaining what facts and dimensions are, we can see that these sorts of business concepts that we glean from our data are communicated really well when viewed through the lens of content, or uh, 
free through the lens of facts and dimensions. It communicates the relationship between the data really, really well. And there's not really this need for us to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. So we've kind of got this problem. We've got this book. The, earliest, uh, the latest edition, sorry, was written in 2013. Uh, the world has changed. Uh, but we think that there's still these core concepts which are important. How are we going to use this system? And the answer is that we adapt it. Okay, so um, you need to uh, find a way to know what to uh, take away from Kimball's methods and what uh, can be discarded. Uh, and we'd like to point out here that like it's not an uh, all or nothing proposition. So. Um, hybrid methods are very common. You might have a like a Kimball style star schema that you have um, one big table on top of pre-joined pre tables for, for performance. Uh, you might have an integration layer underneath that uses uh, something else like Data Vault. Uh, it's it's definitely not an all or nothing proposition. Um, and so, really, the reason for this talk. Oh, I'm going on too far. The reason for this talk is that uh, when we first started out, we were confused. Uh, we had this kind of ancient book. We had a set of modern technology, and we didn't know how to marry the two. So what we've done is we've tried to come up with uh, a set of principles for interpreting Kimball's method uh, today. And the first of these is going to be any advice that's related to storage or performance. Um, any advice related to that should be reinterpreted through the mechanics of your warehouse. So if you're using a warehouse like Snowflake or BigQuery, your options for storage limitations are, or like storage limitations aren't really of concern, whereas like on Redshift, if you're on a fixed instance size, you're going to have to be more mindful of advice related to storage or performance, though not as mindful as you would have to be if you were in Kimball's day. And the second is considering any details that get really specific. So we've listed auto-incrementing uh, integer surrogate keys as an example here because it's a recurring discussion in the community. Um, for the specific example, don't worry about getting that specific. Just make sure, you're, just make sure your keys are unique. Um, and you can apply that to really any kind of uh, suggestions within the book about how to specifically achieve something. And the last is any advice that's related to ETL or any kind of data processing. Um, this should be re-examined because uh, of the huge paradigm that we've, seen, that we've seen between the shift from ETL to ELT. OK, so let's recap. A lot has changed in the last 25 years. But the dimension model is still widely understood by many. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, and that being said, if you're a beginner to dimensional modeling or you're just starting out learning how to model your data, you probably don't need to read uh, this book specifically. Um, but there are, there are alternatives. Yeah, we like this one. It's called Star Schema, The Complete Reference. It's by Christopher Adamson. Uh, I looked it up this morning. It's actually written, uh, released before the most recent version of the Data Warehouse Toolkit. So I want to make the point that uh, we think this is a better overview and introduction to the core concepts, but it's not a recent book. Um, so you still need to uh, reinterpret uh, or sort of filter the contents of the book through those sort of rules that we presented earlier. Uh, and I think generally the rule is the further you go into the book, the less likely it is going to be to be important. And a book that details how we should implement dimensional modeling or how we should interpret dimensional modeling in the modern era has yet to be written. And I really wish that we were following the slide up with like a book that we've written and all of our genius ideas in it. Um, maybe the next author will, is in this room. Uh, we'll see. But the book has yet to be written. Uh, and before we finish, uh, we kind of wanted to leave you with one thought. Um, we've spent uh, the last 20 minutes or so um, you know, diving into one very specific uh, system of data modeling. But what's much more important is, um, uh, like, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but don't throw the bath out either, OK? So what I mean by that is uh, some data model, a thoughtful data model, is better than no data model. Uh, and so if you're 
in this room, if you're watching online, uh, hopefully that means that you care about modeling data, uh, doing so thoughtfully. Uh, and so that's the mo most important thing. So uh, don't get too hung up on all the nuances. This is like a guide for one system, but really just be thoughtful about how you do things. So go forth. And model thoughtfully. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Josh and Sydney. I believe lunch is up next. Are you, did you want to take any questions or? Uh, I, I think put the questions in the, yeah. in the Slack. All right, so. drop your questions in the Slack and Sydney and Josh will get back to you. Awesome, great thank job you. guys.